first as a, uh, a lobbyist work, working on the issues, and then starting in 2002 when I was first elected to the uh, legislature. And, and for all but uh, two years, I have served on the House Natural Resources and Energy Committee, which is the committee on the House side that's responsible for um, developing the policy. And, and so um, I've watched from the beginning of both the development of the energy policy in the state of Vermont, which simply stated is build as much in-state renewables as, as quickly um, as possible for all the good reasons. And over the years, there have been um, uh, surveys and deliberative polling processes where, where uh, the people of the state of Vermont have, have wholeheartedly <coughs> supported overwhelmingly supported that, uh, that policy creation. Um, and that policy creation has been developed with, with uh, uh, tripartisan or including independents, quadpartisan uh, support signed by both Republican and Democratic governors overwhelmingly. At the same time, um, we created in the state a regulatory process over the last 30 years that I would argue is uh, not only the most arduous in the country, but probably the most arduous in the nation. And now, what we're seeing as you drive around the state of Vermont, where uh, in the past, if you ever saw a solar panel, you would go, oh my god, what, what, what's that? And now you see them everywhere. And now you're seeing now you're seeing turbines, you're seeing larger uh, you're, you're seeing, uh, high elevation uh, turbine projects, wind projects, you're seeing them localized in, in the valleys, there's uh, more hydro uh, development, and all of that has been a result of all the policy and um, the, the uh, financial help that we have uh, been able to create in the state of Vermont. Uh, uh, without that, without the policy, um, without some of the financial incentives, none of this would have occurred. So we have, we have the policy in place, we have the regulatory process, and now we're in the build-out phase. And as we get in the build-out phase, when you're seeing projects come to fruition, um, there is problems that arise. People go, oh, I didn't know it was going to look like that, or I didn't know that this was going to be the impact of it. What I'm concerned about is that um, instead of saying uh, what I'm hearing is because there's problems, let's undo everything that we've just done in the last 15 to 30 years. Let's stop. Instead of saying how can we come together to create solutions to these problems, okay? So what we're going to be doing in my committee is addressing these issues uh, not so much headlong, you know, head into it. I, I, I don't want to discuss wind, okay? Because I don't think there's any point in discussing wind. We've defined what renewable is in this state. You all know what they are. And we've defined the policy and we've created the regulatory um, process. So I don't want to discuss when because the policy says on the, on the electric energy side, which is what wind, for example, and most of your solar uh, creates electric, electric energy, is we require the utilities to have a certain percentage of their portfolio derived from renewables. And they have to have this substantial amount, I don't remember what the figures are anymore, uh, in, a, in, a, in a fairly short period of time. I think it's 2020, as, as a matter of fact. Okay? We don't tell them where they got to get it or how they got to get it. We just tell them they better have it. And the state of Vermont, uh, the folks, the people of the state of Vermont, through the representatives, have supported us. We, we had an energy bill last year um, that
that didn't get one question from the minority party on the floor. Not one. Okay? And it was a unanimous vote to pass it. So that to me says there's a substantial amount of support. Okay? So why are why are the uh, wind projects, for example, being built? Because those are the projects that, on their own, economically, the utilities have realized uh, is, the, is the cheapest and quickest way to achieve the policy goal okay, that they are required to meet. That's why those projects are being built. Okay? They're not being built because folks are going in there to exploit these people and exploit those people or because there's some financial killing that a corporation can make. That is why those projects are being built. And so when I begin to hear uh, these discussions about moratoriums, let's, let, let's stop what, what we're doing, um, or attacks on the public service board uh, uh, process, what came very clear to me and members of, of my committee was, um, wow, the folks are looking at a permit process and they're thinking of it as a de facto planning process. There is no planning in the state of Vermont. We don't have any planning in the state of Vermont because there are a lot of folks in the, in the state of Vermont that that uh, um, don't want town plans, and they don't want local zoning. So there has not been uh, planning in the state of Vermont. As a result of that, um, developers and the permit process become the de facto planning process. But as I'm sure you know, as business people who have probably at some level been through a permit process, you're supposed to get your permit. The Public Service Board is is not gone haywire because they uh, give most people their permits. The regulators set a bar, and if the developer meets the bar that is set, the permit is issued. It's not about whether it's a, a good project or a bad project or whether it sh should be here or whether it should be there because it's the developer that gets to choose that. Um, what's going to go on in the, in the Northeast Kingdom with the proposal by uh, the owner of JP to do a half a billion dollar development project? He gets to choose the plan, because he's the developer, because there is no planning process. And when, and, and when, I, when I looked at that project, and, and then I was also listening to uh, the statements that were being made about why a wind moratorium would be, be good in the state, I said, whoa, wait, wait a minute, you know, here's this half a billion dollar project in, in the Northeast Kingdom um, that's going to have uh, uh, more development up, up the mountainsides and in, in the valleys um, and bring in, you know, thousands upon thousands of, 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 of people to live and work there. Well, that's going to have a real impact on the culture of the, the Northeast Kingdom, and that's also going to have a huge potential impact on the environment in the Northeast Kingdom. And nobody's saying anything about it. And nobody's talking about, well, wait a minute, is, is this is what's best uh, for that area? So in that context, um, I have drafted a bill, 